Okay, so we've got our part here. Uh, we're going to start by creating a setup for the part. And the uh, first thing you need to do to uh, design your setup is decide what orientation you want to put your part in. Now, if you, um, for this piece, it is going to be used for a piece of tooling and die, and this is an actual forming block that's going to be hardened, and this part will actually put the shape into another piece of metal. Uh, and so with these radiuses up here, they're actually going to do the forming itself. And uh, so we want to have these edges all very pristine. Uh, so that will tell you uh, how you want to orient your piece as you go to design your two paths. And uh, what you want to do is <clears throat> uh, you don't want to cut these parts first and then have to flip it over and chuck it into your vise because then you'll have vise marks down the edges of this. And depending on the sizes of your radiuses here, uh, you might uh, they might round out too far to sit properly on your parallels and then you won't have a perfectly flat surface uh, to deck off the bottom and get your height properly with so we're going to do that part last we're going to start off uh, by cutting all squaring up the block from a rough sawn piece and then getting all the sides the right uh, dimensions adding the holes here and then we'll flip over and do the back side. That way that side does gets done last and ends up in a perfect condition for us. So to start off, the first thing you want to do is create a setup. Setup is up here, looks like a folder. All right, and uh, what you want to do <coughs> first is tell the machine uh, what orientation your part's going to be in. Uh, to do that, you go to coordinate system here. Uh, change from model orientation as it drives off of how the model was built when it was designed uh, and we're going to go to select Z and uh, Y planes uh, for the Z plane you're going to grab uh, the top surface of your part that's going to be facing upwards uh, and you can grab a face for that so I'm grab that part right there <clears throat> and then uh, you want to figure out uh, or you want to indicate uh, your X axis which is going to be walking along here that's how it's going to be in the machine so you grab an edge to give it your X and then once you get your X and Z figured out uh, you want to get the orientation uh, organized properly and so you want your X going off to the right and your Y heading to the back currently it's uh, sitting the opposite direction of that uh, so if you hover over uh, these arrows they will give you the option to click the arrow and then it'll flip everything and now it'll be in the orientation you want so you want Z going up, X to the right, Y to the back. So that will be uh, your first steps. Um, getting your X, Y, and Z planes figured out. And then uh, figuring out the orientation you want to put it in your machine. Uh, and then the only other option here we'll be dealing with is uh, the body. The body is going to be the model that you're working off of. Uh, you can add fixturing options. Uh, there are... Uh, different sites you can download pre-made versions of different kinds of Kurt vices and orange vices and whatever you want uh, you can get those and you can add those to your piece if you want to we're not going to deal with that right now but that's an option uh, so the second thing you're going to do is move over to the stock tab and uh, it's going to have a couple different options here uh, for how to design your stock uh, we're going to be dealing with the first two the rest of them are for dealing with uh, different kinds of materials, but since we're just using square stock, uh, we're going to be working with a fixed size or relative size box. Now, if you use a relative size box, it's going to drive off of the actual size of the model that you're working with, and then it's going to add an offset of a predetermined amount of stock to either side of it. You can do a side offset and a top and a bottom offset. Uh, so you just say, I want to have this is listed auto populates to 40 thou on all sides and uh, if you can run, run it that way great but most of the time you're going to be using a fixed box because you're going to be grabbing or sawing a fixed size piece of material to start with <clears throat> that way you can make it reasonable and they automatically drive uh, to centering that up so you say you want to <coughs> uh, start off the overall part's going to be three by one by two so you say, okay, well, I'm going to start with a piece that's three and an eighth, so 3.125, uh, and that's going <clears> to, <throat> then the position is going to be in center, so it's going to add some on this side and some on that side equally, 
uh, to your uh, to your stock. And then your depth is one, so you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna do one and an eighth. And then on your height, <coughs> uh, you're gonna need something on the bottom to clamp into your chuck uh, or into your vise uh, so that you can cut the part around. So I'm gonna add, I usually add about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna do two and a quarter. And now the, <coughs> uh, the Z height is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna center it. So you've added a quarter now and it added 125 top and bottom. Now what we want to do <coughs> is have all this material sitting on the bottom where you can actually clamp it and just enough on the top to deck off the surface. Uh, so what you want to do with that is change it from the model position being in the center to offsetting from the top of the model and then your offset uh, is going to be what you want left on the surface of the model to deck off to make the top perfectly flat. And what's going to be left on the top is um, just enough for you to run a facing operation and make the top perfectly flat. So we're going to leave uh, 12 and a half thou on the top. If I could type, we're going to add 12 thou to the top. And uh, so that'll be a perfect amount to run a facing operation, get rid of any saw marks, any tool marks and then you'll have a nice flat surface on the top and then you'll have the rest of that material on the bottom to chuck onto uh, to hold into your vise. So the reason you use fixed size box is now I've got a piece of stock that's reasonable size to actually cut out 3 and an eighth by 1 and an eighth by 2 and a quarter. Um, so that's why we use the fixed size box and the model positioning to show where we want the stock in space relative to your part. Third thing you're going to do and the last thing you're going to do is uh, decide on your post processing uh, information which will be on most machines the number one <clears throat> now when you run your uh, setup for your machine uh, it's going to you're gonna run it most of the time on your G54 through G59s um, you don't put in 54 in the WCS offset it took a long time to figure that out you put in the number one because it auto populates to G54 from the number one don't forget that It'll send you to G123 something 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 if you try to put in the number 54 here. So WCS offset 1 is G54. That's what we're going to use most of the time. Okay, now your setup is designed, your stock is defined, and you're good to go. So you've got material on all sides that you're going to cut away, and you've got something on the bottom to chuck on. Alrighty. That is part one, we'll call setup.